I'm fairly busy, but I like you, and I think I could help you. You let people use you. I'm not gonna let anyone use you. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. Sound good? Yeah, that sounds good. My name is Claire Lim, this is NME, and I'm with Paul Rudd and Will Ferrell to chat about the TV series, The Shrink Next Door. Paul plays therapist, Dr. Isaac Ike Hirschkopf, and Will plays his patient, Martin Marte Markovitz. So thank you for both being here with me. Um, the series deals with the true story of manipulation and exploitation of uh, Marty by his therapist, Ike. I wanted to know what it was that attracted you to adapting this for television. If you'd like to start, uh, Paul. Well, I think that, you know, this was a popular podcast. I heard the podcast as did Will and riveting. The story is really interesting. I thought it was well produced and, I, and it seemed like an, a challenge to take on these characters. What about yourself, Will? I totally disagree. No, I, th I think, uh, you know, to what Paul said, it, it just seemed like a, a story that was a bit of a page turner. Um, I mean, you can't turn page. It's a podcast. So you can't turn a page. But you know what I mean, right, Claire? Your turner? An ear turner. A lobe turner, perhaps. Yeah. Did you say Ted Turner? I thought you said Kathleen Turner. <laughs> Um, a, a lube seemed, turner. It, it just <laughs> seemed like a, a very interesting story that uh, was, when you kind of dig down beneath the surface, uh, relatable in a, in a lot of ways and, and uh, very interesting in terms of how fragile that, that the patient therapist relationship is. Um, Paul, what do you think it is actually that makes someone like Ike? emotionally manipulate someone like Marty? Is it just money and status or is there something else going on there? I'm not sure. Um, and I also wonder if that kind of thing uh, is all, if there's, an, if there's an, a, an, a goal or some sort of end game with this kind of relationship. I, I, I'm, I would reckon to say no. I think these things start to develop over time. Like any relationship, it starts to ebb and flow. And I, I don't know. I don't know what his M.O. really was, um, what it was that made him kind of do the things that he did. You know, I have some thoughts, but it, it, I, I don't think that uh, I could really get into them in a press junket, even though it does seem like this would be the place and the time to do this. <laughs> it would, but we you shall would, move right? on. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> I'm here to talk about the character <laughs> and the <laughs> motivation. Totally makes sense. It does. Yeah. <laughs> Why, where else besides here would I talk about it? Unless you're on a bus with someone or a, a uh, you're long, with your therapist. Why you to just you know spill your guts to them? Yeah, possibly. That would actually not be a bad way to do it on a long flight. Let me yeah, tell you about yeah. my motivations. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, you sound yeah. like someone I do not want to be sitting next to in a flight. No offense. Well, they're yeah. starting to do a lot of junkets on on flight transcontinental flights. I'm it surprised just... we're not on a flight with you right now. Yeah. Um, well, um, have there been times in your life when you felt people tried to take advantage of you? And what would you say to those who end up losing themselves in those situations? Uh, I don't know if um, if I've been in this same situation in terms of uh, feeling like someone was trying to take advantage of me. I, but I, I know that I've felt feelings of vulnerability you know and i think we all have have had those moments where in marty's case he he was just kind of looking for a shoulder to cry on and he'd never really had that uh before and and it, you know at, at the in the beginning of our story ike was really like his his knight in shining armor um and and i think for people who've gone down that road before and have uh, somehow found themselves in that situation. I, I, I think it's okay. I think it's okay to not beat yourself up for it because, because I think it really is human nature. I think there's a lot more Marty's out there than there are Ike's. We, we really are trusting and we really want to believe in what people say to us. And, and, and if it, if it feels like it's coming from a safe place, we're willing to take their advice. Um, I mean, both of you have been on work together, many projects, comedies, Paul, you're now, part of the Marvel family as well. What 
kind of performance though can people expect from you here as opposed to your other projects? What can they expect from The Shrink Next Door? It really is a family, isn't it, by the way, the Marvel family? It is a, a real family. It's a real family. <laughs> uh, we yeah, spend holidays yeah. together. Sorry, I didn't mean to get off, you uh, off. Yeah, not at all. But um, it, it's a great family. But like any family, you have your uh, yeah, yeah, issues. Your ups and downs. I mean, yeah. in, in regard to the shrink family, <laughs> uh, I would say people could expect may, maybe something a little different mm -hmm. than what you know they might anticipate when uh, – think of maybe the two of us together it's it's, it's a different kind of uh, it's a different story these are different characters I think tonally it's uh, different than things that we have done before or I have certainly done before um, with Will yeah I think you're gonna really find I, I I'll speak on Paul's behalf this amazing performance from Paul in the sense that he's you know you're used to charm and charisma from this guy and you'll see that but at the same time there's a dark undertone there and and he uses that uh kind of the art of pers persuasion in this character is is really powerful well thank thank you for saying so yeah. i was uh that was a prepared statement i, I read <laughs> so, i don't know why i actually thought you were going to say the art of and i really think the art yeah. of pastrami oh which, uh, i'd well, like to see a that great and sandwich it, shop on sixth avenue yeah <laughs> The Great. Art of, the okay. <laughs> the art of and and I would say this about Will, and that Will is vulnerable and so uh, just heartbreaking, and and it's such a layered, nuanced, uh, re uh, empath, like, relatable, incredible performance. I'm a big Will Ferrell fan, but I just <laughs> saw you know I see him in this and go, what can't he do? As opposed to others, there are a lot of <laughs> detractors out there. Yeah. Well, same. Yes. I mean, <laughs> I got it too. Thank you so much. I now really want a pastrami sandwich. Um, yeah. I'm very hungry yeah, and check possibly out the, art check out the art of pastrami. Uh, the art of pastrami. We're not far from it. We could. <laughs> we could make you're, FedEx one to you. I don't know where you're. You're in England, right? I mean, you're I'm Scottish. I know. I'm Scottish, but, but I'm in London. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, enemy. We could, yeah. we could get it to you overnight with some dry ice. Uh, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Right. That's it possibly need therapy after that but thank you thank you we know a guy <laughs> for that too thanks guys i thought you were fantastic honestly i couldn't stop watching i think you're both fantastic in this and people should watch it i really hope it thanks, goes well Mark. so thank, thank you very you much for your time today thank you all right thank you